Good morning, wrestling fans. Today is January 11th, 2023. Lance Pratt here. Big thank you everyone for tuning in to GMWF this morning. I sound like a broken broken record now. I say this all the time lately, but I apologize for not having a new episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic last night talking about the big AEW Dynamite special homecoming. So right now, at this time on Good Morning Wrestling Fans, I will talk a little bit about last night's AEW Dynamite Homecoming and Homecoming was live from Daly's Place at Jacksonville, Florida. Our commentators for the evening were Tony Schiavone, Excalibur, and Taz. And for the main event, they were joined by the legendary good old JR. Jim Ross and I was listening to Post Wrestling's Rewind a Dynamite podcast that is available on their Patreon, the Post Wrestling Cafe and I finally now know how Daly's Place there in Jacksonville got its name apparently at some kind of convenience store or something there in the Jacksonville, Florida area. I was thinking maybe dailies, those uh, margarita mixes or whatever they're called. We sell them at the store. I was thinking it might have been that company, but apparently not. Last night on Dynamite, we had Hangman Adam Page defeat Blackpool Combat Club member Claudio Castagnoli. 7 minutes, 11 seconds. Really good match between these two. Thought both Hangman and Claudio put on a really good match here. I enjoyed this opener for Dynamite. And we have a big eight-man tag team match with the Rated R Superstar, Adam Copeland, joining forces with the AEW International Champion, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy, the natural Dustin Rhodes, and Preston Vance. They took on... The Mogul Embassy, the Gates of Agony, and Brian Cage with their partner, the Murder Hawk Monster, Lance Archer. Good eight man tag here. And it was Preston Vance getting the win for his team here, which I thought was a really good decision to go with. We also seen Prince Nana and Jake Roberts kind of get into it at ringside when their team saw when their team lost. I now back to Preston Vance. I was talking about this yesterday on GMWF about Daly's place during the COVID time, the pandemic whichever you want to call it. And how big of a part of that Brody Lee was. And they did show a nice video last night on Dynamite for Brody Lee. And Preston Vance also having 
Brody running on his armband. And they really put over the fact that Preston Vance and also later on Anna Jay were both kind of protégés of the late Brody Lee. I thought that was a very nice thing of AEW to do, to pay tribute. Even though they did have that very nice tribute episode to Brody Lee when he first passed there at Daly's Place. The package went over his feuds with John Moxley, Orange Cassidy, Cody Rhodes, of course. I thought it was done very well. Also, we have Sammy Guevara defeating absolute Ricky Starks. At 9 minutes, 29 seconds, pretty good match. At the end, Big Bill gets involved, and they double-team Guevara, and then Judas starts playing, and we get Chris Jericho out to make the save. John Pollock and live audio Russ Earp post-wrestling, sorry about that, was brought up a point, kind of like New Jack here, and where I'm guessing they wanted to control the fans, maybe drown out some of the booze that Jericho may have got last night, and they just kept playing Judas while he was in the ring clearing the ring making the save for Samuel Guevara will definitely be interesting to see Saturday night at Battle for the Belts if during their tag team title match if they actually do keep the music playing I remember for the one anarchy in the arena match uh, John Moxley was the last to come out. And during the match, they just kept playing Wild Thing over and over again on a loop. But who knows? I don't really see that happening, though. Know? And women's action up next. We have Anna J. Thunder Rosa, Chris Gatlander, and Willow Nightingale defeating... Julia Hart, Sky Blue, and the Outcast, Soraya and Ruby Soho, with Harley Cameron in their corner. Nine minutes, three seconds. Not a bad match at all, but I want to say nothing real special, though. And we get the Undisputed Kingdom out next. And Roderick Strong is in singles action. Taking on Cowboy Brian Keith. This one may be kind of short. 4 minutes, 20 seconds, 22 seconds. But I thought this was actually a very well match. The, even though it was kind of short. They gave Brian Keith opportunity. It, and it looked like he actually did have a chance to defeat Roderick Strong. So it wasn't really... Uh, squash match or anything I would say good match here and then after the match Adam Cole cuts a very good promo and still says that they are going to take the AEW World Championship and in the main event Sting and Darby Allen team up to defeat to defeat the Don Callis family team of Kanosuke Takeshita and Powerhouse Hobbs. Of course, Don Callis is in their corner. Really good match here. Texas Tornado Tag. 9 minutes, 55 seconds. Sting hits a Scorpion Death Drop off the stage at Daly's Place through two tables and Actually, he looked like he kind of had a rough landing. Only one table broke. 
because after the match, I wouldn't say he was completely out of it, but he didn't really look like he was all there either. And after the match, Tony Schiavone gets in the ring and asks Sting what his last match at Revolution in March is going to be. But before he answers, we hear the music of the Young Bucks. It's been weeks since we have seen Matt and Nick Jackson on AEW television. They didn't say nothing, but the tease was definitely there that that could be the final match of Sting's career. March 3rd at AEW Revolution. Sting and Darby Allen taking on the Young Bucks. I have to admit that wasn't the first match I thought of as being Sting's final match in pro wrestling, but eh, I'll give it a chance, definitely. Also, we heard from the AEW World Champion Samoa Joe, and it was announced that next week he will be making his first defense of that World Championship taking on the cold-hearted handsome devil Hook which big fan of Hook let me just say that but I kind of just feel that could be a little too soon I don't see Hook winning the world championship just yet but still I think Hook and Joe will have a very good match next week and I'm definitely looking forward to it well that's all for this Thursday episode of Good Morning Wrestling Fans. Once again, everyone, thank you for tuning in today. Remember, in the comments section, leave your thoughts and opinions on last night's Dynamite Homecoming, either right here on Spreaker or YouTube, or you can email me your thoughts to at 360wrestlingpodcasts at gmail.com. And not sure if I'll do a show because I think tonight on Impact, they're also going to look back at the early days of TNA again. So I don't know if I'll do 360 Wrestling for the edit tonight, but I will be back tomorrow for Good Morning Wrestling fans. Once again, thank you, everyone. And until next time, have a great pro wrestling day.